Ronalund is the oldest amusement park in all of Sweden. This park is a beautiful location in Stockholm, but it has barely any land to work with. It is tiny, so it's incredibly impressive they've managed to cram in as many rides as they have, including eight different roller coasters. This is because the park is very creative by stacking attractions on top of each other. In this video, I will review Gronalund and share everything you need to know about this park. Gronalund opened back in 1883, making it one of the world's oldest theme parks. Today, the park is owned by Parks and Resorts Scandinavia, who also own the nearby Kolmarden Zoo, Skara Summerland, and Feruvik. Gronalund is located on Jurgarden Island in Stockholm. It is specifically located next to the Viking Museum and the ABBA Museum. This placement is gorgeous. The park is right against the water, and in the distance, you can see many of the city's historic buildings. There is a boardwalk running along the back edge of the park, taking you right up to the water. Then the park's tallest rides offer some of the best views of any amusement rides. There are many ways to access Gronalund. I would avoid arriving by car though. 1. The roads can get congested. 2. I've heard you can't even drive onto the Jur Garden unless you have a permit. 3. Parking does not seem particularly convenient between the cost and distance from the park. The lot the park recommends using is a 15 minute walk away. Instead, I would use public transit. The park is just a 2 mile walk from Stockholm Central and the journey is scenic. Alternatively, you can rent a bike or scooter and take advantage of the abundance of bike lanes. Then there are buses, trains, and ferries going directly to the park. The latter is the coolest way to arrive. You get some stunning views of the park's rides in the way. This park is one of the most impressive skylines out there. You just see all these large towers and a convoluted mess of coaster track. It's not by choice. It is by necessity. This is one of the smallest amusement parks in the world. This park spans just 9.5 acres. For reference, Toy Story Land alone at Walt Disney World is larger, yet Gronalund features roughly 30 different rides. That has roughly 3 rides per acre. This could look tacky. I know I've made many parks in Roller Coaster Tycoon that look busy, cluttered, and downright ugly when I stack rides on top of each other but Gronalund pulls this look off. The park is very pretty and thoughtful with how they put things in. The park is very clean and well presented. A lot of parks like this would solely focus on the rides, but Gronalund took beauty into consideration as well. The park is a tiny bit of theming, but it's more about creating a cheery and pleasant atmosphere. Many buildings have a classical architecture to them. The park also manages to squeeze in some greenery, whether it be a few trees or flowers. Attractions of nice looking facades or signs that add ambiance to the midway. Rides also look fresh. Then the rides that travel above the midway are thoughtfully blended into their surroundings. For example, Kavastin is a support that is themed to look like a monster to match the adjacent House of Nightmares. Monster Station is underground and the tunnels were given some landscaping so they are more aesthetically pleasing to look at. All the rides cycling around you gives the park so much kinetic energy. It is overwhelming in a good way. And make sure not to miss anything. Remember, rides are layered on top of each other. My recommendation is to walk through the entirety of the park so you don't miss anything. It is not like that's a huge time commitment anyway. The park is divided into two sections. There's a main area with the larger rides. Then there's a bridge across the road leading to a cluster of kiddie rides. This park comes even more alive at night. There are plenty of lights adorned along the buildings and rides. Many parks in Europe close by dinner, but Gronalund is routinely open late. They typically close at 10 p.m., and that is a hard close. Food and shops close promptly at 10. Then ride queues will close early, so the last cycle goes out exactly at park close. So plan accordingly. The one wrinkle is if you visit on a concert day. Rona Lund gets some really popular artists here, and the show is included with admission. Past acts have included people like Weird Al and Dua Lipa. The park doesn't have a seating area. Rather, people pack the midway. 
The park then converts the ride platforms for Vilda Moose and Eclipse into priority viewing areas. So these rides will close well before the show starts. Kavastin and Fritfall can also close when there are extremely heavy crowds, but it's not a common occurrence. Even on concert days, the ride lines have been very manageable for me. The longest line I've personally seen has been 20 to 30 minutes, and that's only for a few rides with lower throughputs like Eclipse, Vilda Moosen, and Kavastin. Usually, I am boarding most rides here in under 5 minutes. A lot of that comes down to the fast and efficient operations. The employees here work briskly, while remaining super friendly. I love the staff at this park. I know this park can get super busy for their Halloween event though, which is the case with many parks. Crowds were notoriously lighter in 2023 than past years as a result of a tragic accident on the park's Jetline roller coaster. The ride partially derailed, killing one guest and injuring nine others. Thoughts and prayers go out to the victims and their families. I was stunned to hear of this accident because the park seemed safe for my visits and well cared for. Now if you do encounter long waits, the park does offer a paid skip the line system called the Jet Pass. This is available in the park's largest rides. There is no unlimited option like with most parks, rather you book individual rides. Each one costs roughly 80 to 120 Swedish Krona or 7 to 11 US dollars. You reserve a 10 minute window and when you return, you should have near immediate boarding. From what I saw, not many people were using this. It simply was not needed for most rides. The only time I used Jet Pass was to redeem the two that came with my wristband. I'm not sure if this is just an online special, or if you get this if you buy a wristband in person as well. Speaking of wristbands, I want to talk about this park's admission options. There are a few ways to get into the park. First, there's general admission. This gets you into the park, but not onto any rides. This costs 100 to 200 Swedish krona, or 9 to 18 US dollars, depending on the day. Prices are higher on days with concerts. There also are discounts if you arrive later in the evening. A lot of people come here just to soak up the amazing atmosphere. Second, there's something called the Ticket to Ride. This includes park admission and a wristband valid for all the park's rides. The park offers an all-day option for 400 to 600 Swedish krona, or 37 to 56 US dollars. Prices are higher during peak periods with longer hours. There's also an evening ticket valid after 7 p.m. on those days with late closes. This typically costs 300 Swedish krona, or 28 US dollars. For the past few years, Gronalund has been offering wristbands valid for the first half and last half of the day, but those don't seem to be available in 2024. Even if you purchase your admission online, you need to stop at the ticket booth across from the main entrance to pick up your wristband. Now let's talk about the rides this park offers. I really like this park's collection. The mix of coasters and non-coasters is very well balanced. The coaster lineup is good, but it's the non-coasters that are exceptional. Not many parks do better in this department. The park currently has 8 different roller coasters, and they cover most main genres. The big thing this park is missing is a launch coaster, but that will be rectified with a recently announced expansion. The park is expanding into a nearby parking lot. This will have a World's Fair theme, and most importantly, a dynamic Vacoma launch coaster offering a mix of airtime hills and inversions. This likely will become the park's best ride, and I cannot wait for it to open. As for what the park currently offers, their top coaster at this time is Monster. This is a unique Balzer Mabillard inverted coaster. The conception of this ride alone is intriguing, and I talk about that more in a separate review. Monster sprawls about the park, creating some exciting visuals as you whiz past other rides, buildings, and over the pathways. And the elements are great as well. The inversions are floatier than the older inverts, but the turns have nice positive G's. And the first drop is amazing between the views and the wild snap in the back row. Insane is the park's most intense coaster. This is a rare Intamin Zack spin. Some don't find this the most comfortable experience, but as I noted in a review, 
I do like its tenacity. The Raven turns forcibly yank you downwards. Then the vehicles can also rotate. You won't get many flips in this ride because the staff typically balances the cars well, but you are almost guaranteed to get a ferocious flip in the final hill. It is a wild sequence offering an inversion and ejector airtime simultaneously. Jet lies a bizarre coaster. It was designed by Schwarzkopf, but his company went bankrupt, so it was built by Zier. Then Mauer modified the ride a decade later after it opened to have a longer and steeper first drop. The main layout is a tangled mess, but the highlight is the second drop. You know that demonically twisted drop on a windstorm? Imagine that but far larger. It has some crazy forces. The subsequent turns offer nice positive G's as well. It is unclear if this ride will reopen after the accident though. Another ride that has been standing but not operating for quite some time has been Twister, the park's gravity group wood coaster. This has the stats of a family coaster, but it has some shockingly sharp drops. In the back row, you'll get some strong bursts of airtime. Then the layout has some super tight turns because it was shoehorned around and on top of pre-existing rides and structures. Hopefully this one reopens soon because it adds a lot to this park's lineup. Then this park has two solid family coasters. Filled a moose and is a Gerslauer bobsled. This wild mouse variant has a few hairpin turns with nice laterals, but otherwise is not particularly forceful. The coaster is unique though, as it winds atop buildings and shares some supports with Jetline. Kavastin is a Vacoma family suspended coaster. This layout has since been cloned by Vacoma and even other manufacturers but it was designed specifically for this park. So you have some great near misses with rides and cool visuals riding above the midway. The sensation of flight is what this ride does best. And the two helixes offer some spurts of positive G's as well. Then there are two kiddie coasters. They're big hits with kids, but adults can also ride even without a kid if they want the credits. Tough Tough to Get is a mini wild mouse from Zamperla. It is one of the tamest coasters out there. There aren't any real drops and you just wind back and forth. Nickel Pegan is a small Zier Tivoli coaster. It is small and slow, but it is feistier than Tough Tough to get. Both these rides are in that aforementioned kids section. This area is mostly about some smaller flat rides, but it has such a nice vibe to it. It is the greenest area of the park, and it has a more relaxed atmosphere than the main part of the park. For adult flat rides, this park has an impressive collection. Gronalund loves their tower attractions. They have to be the drop tower capital of the world. There are three different models here. The most famous of the bunch is Icaros. This is one of two Intamin sky jumps worldwide. This ride stands an impressive 312 feet or 95 meters tall, so the views are incredible. And it features gondolas that tilt a full 90 degrees meaning riders will be looking directly at the ground for the descent. This is a freaky visual. As I noted in a separate review, the drop is not as forceful as other drop towers, but it is certainly a more memorable experience. My favorite of the three drop towers is actually Freetfall. This is an Intamin giant drop standing 262 feet or 80 meters tall. All three sides offer amazing views of the park, water, and city. Then the drops are punchy and full of floater airtime as well. Two of the three sides have sit down gondolas. These sides are great. Then the third size exemplary. This one features stand up, floorless, tilting gondolas. The riding position is downright terrifying. You feel so exposed. You only tilt about 15 degrees at the top, but that's enough to force you to stare at the ground. Add in a fast and forceful drop and this ride is breathtaking. Catapultin is an SNS combo tower. It differentiates itself from the other drop towers here by starting off with a launch. And this launch will sneak up on you because it's oddly silent, which is a stark contrast to the other space shots out there. You get some sweet floater airtime at the apex. Then you slowly raise back up for a turbo drop. The descent is good for an SNS tower, but not as impactful as the park's Intamin drop towers. The largest tower here is Eclipse. This is a fun time star flyer standing 400 feet 
or 122 meters tall. This ride offers the most impressive views of all, as you can see for miles in each direction. It does not spin as fast as other rides like it, but that makes it easier to take in the sights. Then there are still plenty of thrills as the swings spin in the wind. Speaking of spinning, this park has three notable rides that'll make you dizzy. Pop Express is a Huss break dance placed indoors. It has a dance club atmosphere with party lights and booming music. The ride is super fun and extremely disorienting, especially if you throw your weight into it to get full spins, but it does have a rather short cycle. Black Fiskin is a Schwarzkopf polyp cleverly placed next to the water. The tubs spin at a good clip, and when combined with a bouncing motion, it is a satisfying experience. Catting Flygarin is a Zier Wave Swinger, also placed by the water. You get a refreshing breeze and incredible visuals as you spin about. The other flat ride I've noticed is Fliganda Matan. This is a rare Zier flying carpet. No airtime, but the downswings violently rip you downwards and offer heavy positive Gs. Moving on to the dark rides, Kronalund also excels in this department. La Taget is a fun ghost train. The hodgepodge visuals are similar to what you'd get in a carnival haunted house, except the scenes here are much better quality and more fleshed out, especially the man taking a poop. No really, that is something you'll see here. Then along with the visuals, this rise some auxiliary effects built into the vehicle that are effective jump scares. House of Nightmares is a haunted walkthrough. It is an upcharge, but it's well worth the price. It's an atmospheric attraction. There aren't too many scare actors, but they're well spaced out, and they're loud when they appear, so they will make you jump. Then there are additional effects like squishy floors, air blasts, and fake paths that add an extra element to the attraction. Lustiga Husted is a strong case as the world's best funhouse. The experience is nearly 5 minutes in duration, and there are all sorts of crazy platforms. I particularly love the sliding staircases at the start, and the bouncing bridges, then the walls are decorative along the way, and the attraction ends with a fast wooden slide. Carlex Stunnelin is a classic tunnel of love. It is a slow-moving boat ride. It's not as engaging as newer dark rides, but you do pass a series of miniatures and static displays. It does have charm, and there are some nude scenes you'd never see in America. One gap in this park's lineup is the lack of a water ride. Water rides are still popular in Scandinavia despite the cooler climate, so I would love if the park could find a way to squeeze one in the future. What else does this park have beyond the rides? There are no shortage of places to eat. Most places are quick service stands offering all the theme park staples. Two items I really like here are the pizza and also the fish and chips. There also are some full service restaurants that have good food and nice locations for people watching. Then there are plenty of games as you make your way down the midway. So, do I recommend Gronalund? Absolutely. This is a classic amusement park with a lot to offer. The park is a beautiful and bustling atmosphere, while also taking full advantage of the nearby Stockholm. The ride lineup is very strong between the mix of coasters and non-coasters. The variety is so strong, and there's something for everyone. That is why I'd recommend this park not just for coaster enthusiasts, but anyone visiting Sweden's capital city. How much time you'll need depends on your interests. You can usually do the coasters and best non-coasters in a half day given the park's compactness and crowds, but I like to allocate myself a full day so I have plenty of time to soak up the atmosphere and get plenty of re-rides. There are so many quality attractions here, and they all complement each other so well. And then while you're in the area, make sure to explore Stockholm. It is one of my favorite cities to visit in the world. It is simply beautiful and the people are so nice. Gronalund is one of the better amusement parks in all of Europe, and it will only get better once the new expansion opens. It's my second favorite park at this time in all of Sweden. I do prefer Liseberry for the best park in the country though. I think that park has a similarly awesome atmosphere, fantastic non-coasters as well, but a far superior roller coaster lineup. So those are my thoughts on Gronalund. What are your thoughts on this park? Do you love it as much as me? Let me know down in the comments. 
If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.